Okay, so again, let's think about what we're doing here with this program based on what you select here. Okay, right now the box is not selected. I can select it by simply holding down the command key. I keep the key, key command held down, the command key held down, and I'm selecting something. Now, why do I want to do that? Because the frame tool does not select. The frame tool creates frames. The frame tool creates frames. So I don't want to, I want to teach you good habits to begin with based on my 24 years of doing this kind of thing. You could run up here every 10 seconds to select the selection tool, but that's not a very productive thing to do. We can turn any of these tools into a selection tool by simply holding down the command key. Very important step here. I'm going to select this text box, I'm sorry, this frame picture box by default. Now, I'm saying picture box by default. You can tell it's a picture box because it has an X running through here. So I'm going to show you a very powerful technique. How can I turn this selected object, keyword, key vocabulary, important to make, take note on this, object. Anything that you see inside the program is an object. Therefore, anything about the object is on the object menu. That's how the program thinks. My objective is to get you to think the way the software thinks. So we want to change the select objects, which is now a picture box, to a text box. So based on these choices, these are all my choices in here. So based on these choices, how would I change the contents to a different content? Well, based on these choices, I would go to content. And based on these choices, I can change it to a text box. Now it's a text box, so if you were to go to the T for typing tool, now you can type there some text. Okay, pretty cool. Because I selected the text box, the text box, the frame was selected. I went to the object menu. I went to content, because I'm changing the content of the select object menu. If you want to do that, Command Z, Command Z, Command Z. Every time you hit Command Z, it goes back to your last move. Command Shift Z goes forward. So as an example, Command key Z, undo, 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 undo. Command Shift Z, redo, 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 redo. So for beginners, for beginners, it's a great program because I can undo mistakes or redo mistakes by hitting Command Z, the last letter of the alphabet that you did for the last mistake that you did or last change that you made. So if you were to delete this by mistake, by hitting the delete key, Command Z, undoes. Command Shift Z, redoes. Command Z, undoes. So I'm going to select this other frame and delete. Now let's say you wanted to make a copy of this particular box here. Now keyword here, copy involves pasting. So copy, Command C, notice your shortcuts right here, paste, Command V, not P, Command P would be printing. So I don't want to copy this box, I want to make a clone copy. So I can do that by holding down the Option key, dragging, as I, I'm sorry, the Command key, my mistake. Command key to select, hold down the Option key to make a clone copy, and drag this by holding down the Command key and the Option key, the key this is option right under the Z key. Make sure you let go of your mouse hand first and you can make a clone copy. So if you were to change this select object to say a different color, I'm sorry, this selected object to a different color, then I can hold down the command key to select the object, hold down the option key to make a clone copy. And now I can change it to a different color. Okay. So once it's selected, it can be affected. Once it's selected, then it can be affected. So you can change the color by clicking over here in my palette. I can make it green. So right now I have three boxes. Now, very important step here. Again, I want you to think about how the software thinks. By default, since the green box was created last, that green box is stacked to the front. It's in front of the red. It's in front of the light blue or sight 
And so how can I change that? How can I get the red to go in front of the green? Well, anything about an object is on the object menu. Based on these choices, what do I want to do based on these choices? I want to arrange the object to bring it to the front. The shortcut for that is command shift. That's the shift key, command shift right bracket. Next to over to the right of the P key is the right bracket key. So you can, if you wanted to bring this box, selected box, red box, to the front of the green box, a couple of choices, you could send the green box behind the red, but we're going to bring the red box in front of the green. So based on these choices, object, anything about object is the object menu, object, arrange, arrange, bring to front. Okay, I could do the same thing with this box here. Now let's use the shortcut key for that. Command shift, right bracket, brings the front. Command shift, left bracket, sends the back. So I could bring the green to the front. Command shift, right bracket. I could send the green to the back. Command shift, left bracket. Now if you wanted to send it one back, so as an example, the green's in front of the red, which is in front of the blue. So you can send one back word by saying object, arrange, send back word, which is command left bracket. So basically it sends it one back, one back, one back, one back. Now let's use some common sense here. If you just had two objects, sending to the back and sending back word would be, would be accomplishing the same thing because there's just two of them. But if you had three, four, five, six, you can go one behind, one behind, one behind. That's called backward, forward. Object, arrange, sent back word, bring to front, send to back. Notice I can't bring to the front because it's already in the front, so therefore this is grayed out. Okay, so let's basically select these three boxes. I can do that very simply by holding down the command key, drag and click hold with my mouse, drag a marquee around that, and hit the delete key. Make a change, save a change. Okay, so let's go make a couple more frames. F selects the frame box. I'm gonna create a picture box here. I'm still in the frame tool. I'm gonna create another picture box here. I'm still in the frame tool, and I'm gonna create another picture box here. So let's fill these picture box frames by default, they're picture box frames because they have the X running through them with pictures. So we need to get this from another file. Very important step. Anything about the file is under the file menu. File print, file save, file import, more specifically, file place. The shortcut for that is command D, file place. We're going to navigate our way to the desktop, that's where I happen to have my InDesign docs. And inside the InDesign docs, I have a folder called images. I'm gonna select one of these images. Double click. That's going to put that picture inside the selected box. So let's do this again. Okay, I'm gonna hold down the command key, keep the command key held down, select this box. File menu, command, D, place, file, command, D. Select another picture. I can either double click or select the file and open. It's gonna put that picture there. Then I'm gonna select this box. Go to the file menu, file, place, command, D. Select another picture and put it inside of that selected box. Now you'll notice that if you have a lot of picture boxes, this can be kind of tedious. So I'm gonna show, show you a very powerful production technique of how I can insert more than one photo at the same time. I'm gonna undo what I just did by going to Command Z. Edit Command Z. Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, Command Z. So let's do this again. So file, file place. But now we're gonna select more than one file. I'm gonna select 15. Hold down the Command key, select 12. Now you can do this with any photos that you have to have any JPEG files that are on your computer, you can do that. You can download JPEG files from the internet, any kind of picture file, an EPS, a JPEG, a PDF. I'm just picking files here, holding down the command key. 
Now I have these three files selected, so I can basically hit the return key or a quick open. So what that did, that put those pictures in my picture queue here. So if I hit the right arrow key, I can go through my queue and th see the different pictures that are in my queue. So I have picture, well, actually I guess I put four in there by mistake. So there's one, two, three, four. There's three boxes. I'm gonna put that picture right there. I'm going to put the right arrow key, this picture right there, and I'm gonna put this picture right here. Now, the choice I have here at this point, I could choose to create another frame by hitting the F key and hitting the frame, but by doing that, that's gonna kill what was in my picture box. So I could, another choice I have here, is I'm gonna drop that picture right here but I don't want to put any more pictures here. So I simply hit the escape key, top left keyboard command. Just hit the escape key, that kills what's inside your frame. Now I'm gonna select this picture here. Now, these pictures are not, these pictures, photos, are not sitting in the frame proportionately. So I can fit them by going to the object menu. Anything about the object is on the object menu object based on these choices, these choices, get to know your choices, based on these choices, fitting, we're going to fit this couple of choices here. We could fit the frame to match the content, which means that the frame is going to grow to match the content. So let's see what that looks like. Notice that the frame changed to meet the content. Command and Z, undo that. Object, content, fit, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, object fitting, let's fill frame proportionately. Now what this will do, it's gonna make the picture as big as it can without distorting it to fill the frame proportionately, okay? So that's as big as you're going to get for that proportion. So as an example, if it was a four by five, a four by five goes into an eight by 10, but a four by five does not go into a 12 by 16 proportionately. So you have to work with the proportions of your file object, fitting, let's fit content to match the frame, okay? So now it distorted it because what it did is it fit the content, which is the bag, to match the frame. That's not what we're looking for either because that's gonna distort the photo. So you have to work with proportional sizes. You can choose to make your pictures bigger or smaller, but just understand those are my choices. Now the other thing I can do too is if I can go up here to my property palette, I have the same icons right here. If I click this icon called Auto Fit, and I click here, it's gonna fit that proportion based on what I select. So these choices here, just to share with you, the choices up here on the property palette are redundancies of object fitting these choices here. Okay. But again, my objective here is to get you to think how the software is thinking. So this is a good head start for the class that we'll do next week. So take your time with this. Get to know the choices. Get to know the options. Anything about the object is on the object menu based on what you select. Right now, I have nothing selected, so there's nothing to change because there's nothing selected. So I can't lock or group. There's a lot of things in here I can't do. All this stuff is great out because I have nothing selected. In order to be affected, it has to be selected.